today's episode, we get a chance to visit a farm in Keno, that is uh, in Moranga County. We're going to interact with John, who is a seasoned poultry farmer. He shall take us through the process of rearing the chicken that we bring to market and our Big Cuckoo brand. Stay tuned and watch this space. We are here at the Sea Greens farm uh, with the owner, Mr. John Jogona. And what, we are, what you're seeing right here is the vehicle disinfection. Um, maybe Mr. John will tell us a bit more of, about why this is important. Hello and good evening. We are here at the main gate. Vehicle disinfection is part of farm biosecurity. And uh, every vehicle that comes into a farm has to be properly secured so that we can eliminate the risk of disease transmission and also keep away and mitigate from the chances of getting diseases in our farms. Entry of anything that would bring a risk to the birds. We also have a visitor's login book where you must log in. Yeah. Like we've exactly done. Log so the visitor's the login book helps with uh, ensuring that whoever comes in here is, uh, is monitored yes. and you then know uh, whether or not they, they were actually supposed to be in here. Yes, you have to have a purpose of coming to the farm. We are here at the Sea Greens farm. We are about to enter a biosecurity zone. No authorized personnel or vehicles are permitted and all vehicles must be disinfected. This is pretty much what you've seen in the first clip when the vehicles were being disinfected. Um, there is no hooting strictly. Uh, everything here is done under surveillance. The reason why there is no hooting is because you might end up scaring the birds. And now uh, let's see what is inside. So from the main entrance, you go to the parking and then now you have to get yourself disinfected. And this is where you arrive at the disinfection point. This is a disinfection point. Our staff are trained to make entry into the farm into the highest standards. Therefore, you will have to biosecure yourself. You have to change your attire, your shoes, wear uh, biosecurity clothes, head hats, and um, mask so that there is no risk of disease transmission from outside yes. into our pens. So Again, does it mean to... if I'm coughing then that, 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 that already... Uh... No, if you're coughing you will not be allowed in. If yeah. you're a fellow farmer coming from your farm you will not oh, be yes. allowed in. And I this also know that if you're coming from a processing location you yes. cannot also get into no, the farm. You no, you cannot be allowed into here. This is the last point of entry. Yeah. Beyond this you will not be allowed in. Even if you're a veterinarian you yes. will not be allowed through this point. Handbags, yes. uh, car keys, phones, anything, any gadget you're carrying. Yes, they are left, left here. They are left here. Yeah. Because that combines with biosecurity procedures. Yes. Yeah. You're completely biosecure. You've left all your, all, all your personal, personal effects. effects here. Yes. You've got good clean gumboots. Yes. You've got a dust coat. You've yes. got a nursing cap. Yes. You've got your masks. Yes. And then you come here, you wash your hands. We have plenty of water in here. Yes. Because water is not only a nutrient. Yeah. But ele an element of biosecurity. So we have a lot of water in the farm. You wash your hands thoroughly. And then you have to go through the first foot dip. Let me put this. We have a designated foot footpath. Yes. And you cannot come out of the footpath. So you have to actually maintain. You have to maintain the footpath. On the footpath, yeah. And the footpath must be kept clean. Yes. The foot deep water, which has a terminal disinfectant, is changed at least three times in a week, so mm. that we can maintain efficacy. Now this is where we have to dip all our, uh, our, our feet, gumboots. Yeah. Our gumboots. That's the first point of disease control. Okay. Each coop is housing 18,000 birds. 18,000. We have two coops, two and a half coops. Yes. There's a coop housing 4,000 birds on this other side. So we have a total capacity of 40,000 birds in this farm. At any given point, do you, do you keep uh, 40,000 or do you do uh, different coops? No, we are not multi-stage. We do 40,000 all in, go. all out. All in, all out, yeah? Yeah, we are not a multi-stage farm. You can see it must be loaned and cleaned properly. Yes. These are the staff houses. Mm -hmm. 
So all your stuff are uh, in house. In house. Yes. They do not move. When it's production, they're not allowed to come out. Yeah. Actually, everything is brought to the gate. Yes. The benefit of this is to allow to ensure that there is many more um, interaction from outside, with outside uh, yes. farms and <laughs> people. People, yeah. Yes. Disease control is mitigated. Mm. These are our utilities, our toilet, our bathroom, our stores, mm -hmm. our sink. When you come out of the toilet. Yes. And where you store some of your equipment. Yeah, as these well. are our equipment stores, mm. you can see. Everything is clearly labeled. Mm. Yeah. Everything is labeled. So that uh, you cannot say you didn't know or you do not know. This is our canteen. Mm -hmm. We, sometimes we have good moments. We come here to watch Tele in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we come in. We ah, come to watch movies. Interesting. Yeah. We come to watch YouTube yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The assembly point and yeah. canteen. Assembly point and canteen. This is our little coop house in 4,000 baht. They are 31 days, almost ready for the market. So normally it takes up to uh, from days. day zero to the 35 days. Yeah. Yeah. That's the duration of, of yeah, time we, that we, this chicken has to yes, grow we, up to what, what weight? We grow birds to 35 days. We target a live bird of 1.8, 1.9 mm -hmm. and a dressed weight of about 1.4. When you say dressed, what does that, what does that mean? Dressed means that's a capon. A capon means there are no offals, mm. there are no feathers, there are no legs. It's just a cap on what you see on your supermarket store as yes. a cap on. All right, that so we are targeting for a day 35 to have 1.4 kilo bud. Yeah, that's a 1.95 kg. Live weight. Live weight. All right, all right. Yeah. So these are uh, day 31, so yeah, they day should 31. be... They're they 93%, they're 1.67. 1.67 kilos. So yeah. they still have a bit, uh, two or three more days yeah, to go. They, they still have about three days. Yeah. Each day they are going to do about 100, mm. 90 to 100 grams. So we are doing 93, 95% on our target, which is not bad. When you say 90 to 93 grams, that's what they need to feed on every no, other day. They, they are feeding on about 160 and converting about 90 grams. Now, because um, our viewers are also not non-technical farmers. Yeah. Could you explain what you're, say, uh, what you're saying about the conversion ratio with regards to what uh, the amount of chicken that feeds that they, the, the chicken are consuming? What happens is, for every day the chicken will consume a certain amount of grams. When the bird comes, it will consume 13 grams. When it's leaving the farm, it will be consuming 180 grams. Throughout its growing period, it's going to consume 3.2 kg. We target an F, a farm FCR of about 1.6 to 1.62. The FCR is a feed conversion That's ratio. That's a feed conversion case. ratio. Mm. Meaning, if the bird is taking, for instance, 50 grams, yes, it's got to convert a lot of that into meat, indeed, and not and very little into waste. Yes. Meaning, you have to have high biosecurity standards. Yes. You have to have staff that are very eloquent yes. and know what they are doing in the farm and why they're meant skilled. to be doing. Mm. They're really trained, these are trained staff. Yes. You also have to have farm management practices and procedures yes. which conform to the standards that you, your customer desires. Mm -hmm. Our customer desires a free and anti antibiotic free bud. Yes. Therefore, you have to mitigate from anything that would bring an diseases to farm. and yes. hence now require antibiotics to treat yes. uh, the bud. Yes, we do not use antibiotics in this farm. Yes. We always conform to bird welfare, keeping the birds to their highest standards, giving yes. them rest when it is desired and feeding them at only specific times mm. during the day mm. and during the night. We do not feed birds 24 hours. Yes. As a myth. Yes. We feed them according to the standards yes. given by the cob or whoever is supplying the, the day-old chick. The day-old chick. Now, as we are talking about the day-old chick and especially the, the animal husbandry practices, mm. there are different day-old chicks. There are different breeds of day-old chicks. Are, and which, again, influences now what kind of feeds or the feed regime that you put, put the bird under. Yeah. Uh, is it true that, indeed, different breeds uh, require different feed regime? or different uh, husbandry uh, practices? Yes, the broilers are different. We've got winters, we've got marathoners. 
You need to know and identify which breed you want to bring in the farm. Yes. For example, we've got a Rose 308, we've got a Hubbard, we've got a Cop 500, Cop 700, we've got an AA Avia Gen, we've got a Naked Neck. There are mm. several brands of several breeds. Mm -hmm. which How do you know which one then to, to actually pick from? You need to talk to you, the person supplying you. Yes. Therefore, you have to go to someone or a company that is sub supplying you quality chicks they mm. know that the mother or the breed of the f the chick yes and that that goes a long way to to the farm to show what management practices that you have to adopt mm. sprinters are not marathoners they do not require the same management practices yes the farm must be trained mm. to understand that, that birds are different reservoir tanks we've yes. got a borehole yes. but we always store water mm. uh, this is our generator points, although the generators are up for service. Yes. This is our farm office. You can come in. This is where we keep records. Yes. This is where we keep all our... Uh, and I uh, see that you have here, no one is perfect. Yes, no one is perfect. <laughs> yeah. We all need to accommod be accommodating. Yeah. Understand each other. This so is, this is where all your farm records are yes, kept, the, the farm the, manager's office is it? Yes, the disinfectants, thermometers, scales, disposable, yeah. vitamins, everything is labeled. We've got a first aid kit, we've got mm. chlorine, our feed samples come where the files are, the files should be on another. Everything must be where it's meant to be. Yes. This is our feed store, goods mm -hmm. in. Yes. The, good, the feeds will come in through here and will exit through another door yeah, okay. so we can be able to trace and maintain the cleanliness, uh, the cleanliness and uh, also the records so this this is also our second biosecurity point you cannot get in here as you can see there is only one way to lock this you cannot lock it from inside therefore that's the way i know that the staff oh, yes. are all in if yes. i lock them that way they cannot come out there is no other way of actually doing there is, that. And, there is and no this, this is actually the first, the second entrance, right this from the, the, third. the third entrance, this is from the, the third. main gate. Yes. What we have heard is the main gate where the, the vehicles gate got a, in. Gate B and now, gate C. This is gate C. Gate C. Yes. Wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Everything is monitored on camera. We yeah. got, I can see everyone getting into the farm. On, I can see the farm literally on my phone. Interesting. This so is our this staff changing point. Yes. The staff will come out from their houses. Yes. Come to this point. Yes. Where they are, they are uniform. Yes. You've got uniforms, as you can. You will go around and see them. They must be in uniform, mm. clean uniform. Wear their footwear, which must be clean. Yes. Leave their mobiles there, and now make way to the production area. All right. Let's get into the production side. Thank you. Remember, you have to disinfect again. Indeed. By now we are familiar with the swish and swash of the gumboots inside the disinfected, the disinfectants. Yeah. Ah, so we had goods in on the yes. other side, and, this is and now this out. is goods out. Our farm has a store capacity of holding up to 1,200 bags. Wow. That feeds for about five days, mm -hmm. because every day we are consuming about... Uh, that's feed for about 11 days. Every day we consume about 110. Did you say 1,100, is it? Yes. We run 2000, two, about 2,500 bags in 35 days. <laughs> so we, we literally eat a trailer in five days. <laughs> Interesting. Now, so it means that indeed, as, as you get frequent deliveries, you must also ensure that uh, biosecurity is practices maintained. is maintained. These are has, betting points, as you right. can see. Yes. We put uh, bettings yeah. inside the pipes. Yes. You put dawa yeah. inside the pipes. So this is this is useful for rodents and rodents, and yeah. it must be labeled so that mm. it's poisonous, so that no one eats no one that. No that does that. I don't run the risk of paying someone because he's eaten poison <laughs> from <laughs> <Rat> my farm. <laughs> yeah. This is our secondary holding water point. Wow. Mm hmm. So this is also where the, they, they also do a bit of the cleaning of the... Cleaning, this is our utility. This is our washing area. Yes. And these are the stuff. So at this point, it's, uh, it's cleaning all that was in, in, yes. in, the, in the sheds? Yes, it's water. They're cleaning the water. The, the, it's, 
and there's replenishing with clean water. Yeah. Yeah. So how often ha must this be done? How often do you do it? Watch out, Kujibu. Marangapi, Kwasiku. Four times every other day. Uh, every, every day. Every day, four times. Yeah. Mm. Oh, interesting. Mm. So then after cleanup, uh, that's now when you, you're yes. taking them back. These are just supplementary drinkers mm. to assist the birds. Yeah. Because the birds have grown all their life accommodating the small drink, the many drinkers. Yes. But as you can see, the house is well equipped with enough drinkers. The automatic Automa drinkers, the yeah. automatic drinkers. And I also note that this entire surface is, is uh, well cemented. Yes. So to yes. avoid any, any dirt. Any motion, yeah. easy to clean. Again, we, got, we, we get into... Food bath. How many footpaths are those? Now, this will be the the, the first, the second, and, and the, the third. This is the third. Yes. This is the third point of disinfection. And now you're ready to go Ooh. into the buds. Wow. These are our buds. Ah, it's... This you said was 18,000, is it? Yes, this is 18,000. They will feed at 8 p.m. because it's really warm now and mm. we need to cool them down. Yes. That's why we are putting supplementary drinkers yes. just to assist them in the cooling, in cooling them down. Yeah. And then at 8 p.m. we are going to feed them. Now, in the first, uh, in the first small brooder, we, we saw that the birds were day 31. Yes. Is it the same as this? Yes, this are also 31 As you days. mentioned that indeed you, it's yes. all in, all, all out. All out. They will okay. all come out at one single day. Mm. They all came in at one single day and yes. they will come out at one single day. Most of them are 1.8. And uh, 1.7, as you can see, we also have 2 kgs within here. Mm. But Big birds and other small yeah. birds. We tried to have a uniform flock by doing the best in management. Yes. Best management practices. Yeah. And saying that our birds are actually as healthy. We do not use any antibiotic. You can see uh, our litter is completely dry. Yeah. Uh, now, talk to us about litter management because i know this must be a uh, quite a headache especially when you have this much number of birds at any one time uh, litter management is, is something that we practice right from the time the birds come yes. when they're four days we start raking and we do rake the litter twice a day this is to exhaust ammonia mm -hmm. and also to keep it dry while raking, you're also able to identify any sick bird that is not moving or immobile. Yes. You're also able to identify anything that would be disturbing the birds in terms of stress. Yes. And you're able to keep away stuff like coccidiosis and all those pathogens that could inhibit the growth of the bird. When you say raking every other, yes. ev twice every day. Yes. That is this indeed way. this. Yes, you see. So it means that whatever uh, the, 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 the wet patches, of course, go down and it provides a softer, drier surface for the birds. Essentially, it? there shouldn't be any wet patches mm -hmm. because you're actually raking litter that is on top. Yes. That has feces. Yes. And you're putting the feces under and bringing fresh litter on top. On top, yeah. But any wet patch is actually removed and taken to Ashamba, which is about a kilometer from here. Okay. So we, our drinkers do not leak. Yes. We do not, there is no chance of these drinkers leaking having, and, and leaking. leaving uh, patches. Yes. yes, again, as you can see, the drinker heights, Yeah. They, they confirm to bird welfare that the bird must be able to go through or below the drinker so that you can be able to help it develop a good breast, mm -hmm. a good breast muscle. Yes. And you can cultivate more of meat from the breast because ideally that's what the broiler does. And the way to do that is just raising up the drinkers. So number one, the drinkers, you can see they're that's completely clean. They are also adjustable. You're yes. able to, to lift them up. Yes, you, you can drop them mm -hmm. and you can raise them. Yeah. The it also becomes quite easy then when you're removing the, the litter after, after yes. an entire yes. uh, flock yes. is out. When, when the entire flock is out, we completely remove everything, the curtains, the ceilings, yeah. everything that is here, all the equipments, and they are washed and stored in our storage compartments there. Mm. 
and then we remove our litter and we thoroughly wash this place with a lot of soap and disinfect. We let it rest for two weeks and now bring in a new lot. Underneath the litter? Yes. Is it a dry surface, is it? Yes. Believe me, it is a cemented floor, smooth floor. Yeah. You can see it is completely dry. Yeah. So what is the, what is the purpose of having a cemented floor uh, to having the... Dirt floor. Yeah, dirt floor. Bird welfare conforms. It is conformity with bird welfare, number one. Number two, you, you know, bacterias or microbials will able, are able to get their way into dirt and they're able to incubate and uh, have the dirt floor as a breeding ground. Mm. But when you have a smooth surface floor, yes. it only means that they can only go up to the level of where the floor is. Okay. Beyond there, they cannot be able to penetrate because it's completely sealed. Yes. It's easier to clean, it's easier to remove the litter and to clean the area. And it is also easier to manage your birds because the litter is completely dry and there is, there is no risk of the bird getting into contact with dirt or soil. Okay. So, okay. standards, you must have a completely clean, very smooth floor, floor. and the walling yeah. to, to reduce bacteria hibernation into those areas. We've improvised a way of carrying. This is interesting. So Yeah. <laughs> Now it's interesting to also note that the feed, the drink, the the feed, uh, the feed beans are on one straight line, yes. while the drinkers are on the other, yes. and they are alternating. Yes. What is the essence of that? Birds are not supposed. To... A bird is a clever animal. Mm -hmm. A bird will only occupy a certain space and they register that space. Yes. So. Ideally, birds do not move much, and as they grow, they tend to occupy a certain space and live in that area. Yes. Therefore, we try to maintain a three to four feet distance between distance our between the bean. feeders mm -hmm. and, and our drinkers. That means the bird has close proximity to and access to anything that it may require. So it gets to be comfortable when, yes. when uh, you know, it's turning on one side, it's and able to get what its food. It, when finding its water. Yeah. And that way, the growth of the bud. You see, this bud which is here will never go to that wall. Yeah. And that bud will never come here. To this other side. Yes. Yeah, so y you need to, to to understand that the bud will register a certain space. Yes. And live in that space. And you need to supply it with all the nutritional Benefit. elements mm -hmm. within that space. That is water, yes. clean water, yes, and food and the good air quality. You can see our coops Indeed. are well ventilated. Indeed. Because we don't risk the, heart, the, the, the issue of panting or heart attacks mm. or even flips. What is the essence of the curtains that you're seeing? The ceilings, the ceilings are a buffer mm -hmm. so that hot air from the iron sheets cannot fall onto the birds. Ah, okay. So the ceilings the birds live with a ceiling and you can actually understand how cool it is. In indeed, there. indeed. It is very it's cool. It's quite noticeably cool. It's, just, it's the same concept of a house. Mm. A house without a ceiling is normally hot because hot air Direct will Direct sunlight yes. is able to come in and uh, uh, you're also not yes. able to maintain uh, the, yes. the temperatures within yes. the houses. Yeah. Uh, again, when we are heating, yes. when they're small and we are heating, yes. we are only confining the birds to a certain area. That means we are more efficient in terms of heating. You can see we use gas equipment for heaters. Yes. We've actually withdrawn them now, but you can see the cylinders are outside there. Perhaps you could uh, tell us a bit more about uh, how, how long you use your, um, you provide additional heating until maybe at a point when the birds are able to manage uh, them by themselves. themselves yeah. The bird is meant to find an, a, com a comfortable home. Therefore, mm -hmm. heating is ideally something that begins before the bird comes. Yes. We preheat our houses a day before the birds come. Yes. We get the floor temperature to 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Yes. Mm. And we place the birds on a floor temperature of 30 degrees. We will continue heating until the birds, all the th birds have thermoregulated. 
Thermal regulation is a process that takes time. Birds yes. will thermal regulate from day, day 5 all the way up to day 14 or 15. Yes. But we will continue assisting all the birds up yes. to day 21. So now from day day twenty one, the bird the bird is able to the bird is able to regulate uh, to regulate temperature by itself. to to maintain its own body heat and mm. uh, be comfortable with the heating that is there. Mm. Uh, at day twenty one, you're looking at maintaining around twenty three or twenty four degrees. When the day when when the bird is at uh, at you know when when in, you know a day old chick requires what uh, a day old chick it, it, ideally it's, that's why you need to talk to your agent or your supplier to know yeah. and to understand the breed they are bringing you yes the nature of the parent stock yes. the age of the parent stock so that you can be able to adapt to the correct brooding guidelines but on a nutshell yeah. Birds will be require heat between 30 to 32 degrees when they arrive to the farm. Mm -hmm. That's up to about day five, and then they will start thermoregulating or internalizing their own body temperatures. That means you will start reducing their the external heat. Yes. Or heat to about 30, 28, 30. Yes. You will do 28, 30 for the next five days. Yes. And then as you open up your house, uh, you will drop the temperatures to 26 degrees mm. and you will finish your brooding at around 26 degrees, whether it's at night or during the day. Okay. You must maintain those temperatures. It's at interesting day, At day 21, the bird is fully mature. It can be able to thermoregulate and adapt a certain space and live within comfort, comfort yeah. in that space. And every, every breed has its own requirements. So it's actually important for that you as a farmer gets to understand your uh, the I mean the source of your day old chick yes the standard is for a bud which is of 40 grams around 40 grams at placement you will confirm to 30 to 32 degrees mm -hmm. but in young parent stock buds which are about 32 33 31 grams then they will need more heat because those are actually like babies in an incubator. Indeed. So you'll actually hit the buds to about 33 to 35 degrees. Therefore, it is very important to know the age of your parent stock or the, the mother of the babies that have been brought to your farm. Yeah. And also to understand the breed because not all breeds respond in the same way. A cob will not respond the same way as a Hubbard. A Rose 308, mm. which is a sprinter, will not grow to the same ratio as, as an Maradona. AA. Mm. An AA will probably feed more yeah. but grow more. You know, you need to understand a lot there's the language of the bird. Indeed, and you have to actually have the technical skills as, as we are clearly seeing with John. <laughs> we need to well, eat. let's take a break and uh, we'll be back with much more.